Good morning, and welcome to the historic Basilica Cathedral of St. John the Baptist. We welcome all of you present and those joining us through live stream. We pray that you are in good health. We ask that all present please respect the instructions given by our parish ushers and the guidelines in place to prevent the spread of COVID-19, including using hand sanitizers, maintaining a social distance of two meters, and wearing face masks at all times within the church. At the time of Holy Communion, further instructions will be given, and at the end of Mass, we ask that you please follow the ushers' instructions for exiting from the church. Our presider today is Father Cecil Critch, and our entrance chant is, O oh God, our help in ages past, number 644 in the Catholic Book of Worship. Please stand. of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And with your spirit. Good morning, everyone. Good morning, Father. Uh, today in our gospel, we hear about the call of Matthew, the tax collector. And uh, the disciples uh, were, were, most of Jesus' disciples um, were sinners. <laughs> they were all sinners. Uh, we were all sinners. We asked God's mercy every day for our sins. So as we reflect on the call of Matthew today, we ask the Lord to come into our hearts and to forgive us our sins. You were sent to heal the contrite of heart. Kyrie eleison, Kyrie eleison. You came to call sinners, Christe. Almighty God, have mercy on us, forgive us our sin, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Let us pray. Grant, O Lord, that we may always revere and love your holy name, for you never deprive of your guidance those you set firm on the foundation of your love. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God, forever and ever. Amen.
a reading from the book of Genesis. Sarah lived 127 years. That was the length of Sarah's life. And Sarah died at Kiriabatha, that is Hebron, in the land of Cana. And Abraham went in to mourn for Sarah and to weep for her. Abraham rose from beside his dead wife and said to the Hittites, I am a stranger and an alien residing among you. Give me property among you for a burial place so that I may bury my dead out of my sight. After this, Abraham buried Sarah, his wife, in the cave of the field of Malpiah, facing Mamre, that is Hebron, in the land of Cana. Now Abraham was old, well advanced in years, and the Lord had blessed Abraham in all things. Abraham said to his servant, the oldest in his house, who was in charge of all he had, put your hand under my thigh and I will make you swear by the Lord, the God of heaven and earth, that you will not get a wife for my son from the daughters of the Canaanites among whom I live, but will go to my country and to my kindred and get a wife for my son Isaac. The servant said to him, Perhaps the woman may not be willing to follow me to this land. Must I then take your son back to the land from which you came? Abraham said to him, See to it that you do not take my son back there. The Lord, the God of heaven, who took me from my father's house and from the land of my birth, and who spoke to me and swore to me, to your offspring I will give this land. He will send his angel before you, and you shall take a wife for my son from there. But if the woman is not willing to follow you, then you will be free from this oath of mine, only you must not take my son back there. Now Isaac had come from Berlalawa and had settled in the Negrev. Isaac went out into the, in the evening to walk in the field and looking up he saw camels coming. And Rebekah looked up and when she saw Isaac she quickly slipped from the cam camel and said to the servant, who is the man over there walking in the field to meet us? The servant said, it is my master. So Rebekah took her veil and covered herself. And the servant told Isaac all the things that he had done. Then Isaac brought her into his mother Sarah's tent. He took Rebekah and she became his wife and he loved her. So Isaac was comforted after his mother's death. The word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks. be to God. Our psalm is 92. Lord, it is good to give thanks to you. Lord, it is good to give thanks to you. Lord, it is good to give thanks to you. It is good 
to give thanks to the Lord, to sing praises to your name, O Most High, to declare your steadfast love in the morning and your faithfulness by night. Lord, it is good to give thanks to you. flourish like the palm tree and grow like a cedar in Lebanon. They are planted in the house of the Lord. They flourish in the courts of our God. Lord, Lord it, it is, is good, good to, to give, give thanks to you. In old age, they still produce fruit. They are always green and full of sap, showing that the Lord is upright. He is my rock, and there is no unrighteousness in him. Lord, Lord it is good, good to give thanks to you. from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. As Jesus was walking along, he saw a man called Matthew sitting at the tax booth. And he said to him, follow me. And Matthew got up and followed him. And as Jesus sat at dinner in the house, many tax collectors and sinners came and were sitting with him and his disciples. And when the Pharisees saw this, they said to his disciples, why do you teach her eat with tax collectors and sinners? But when Jesus heard this, he said, Those who are well have no need of a physician, but those who are sick do. Go and learn what this means. I desire mercy, not sacrifice. For I have come to call not the righteous, but sinners. The Gospel of the Lord. So the Pharisees ask a question about Jesus in today's Gospel reading when which we can all ask, why does Jesus eat with tax collectors and sinners? Now what the who is who? Matthew was a tax collector and a result, as a result he was hated by the Jews because he collected taxes for the Roman Emperor and the occupying forces. So Matthew and people like him would have been regarded by religious people of the time as sinners who did not keep God's law. Such people were unclean and to be avoided for fear of contamination. Jesus did not follow this path. He was not afraid of being contaminated by sinners and tax collectors. Why does Jesus enter into communion with people whom many religious people of the time would have shunned? The answer to that question is that Jesus' primary mission was to reveal God's mercy and forgiveness to the lost, the sinners, the marginalized. Jesus could see into the heart and not judge by appearances. Jesus quotes the prophet Hosea in today's gospel when he says, what I want is mercy and not sacrifice. And this inspired Jesus and shaped his mission. God is a merciful God who shows mercy upon all people and they in turn are to be merciful to others. 
Jesus wanted people to know that God was more interested in their future than in their past. When Jesus saw Matthew, he saw his potential to be a true disciple. He saw into the heart of Matthew and called him to be an apostle and will give his name to one of the four Gospels. Matthew would preach to his own people that Jesus was the Messiah. Our failings do not drive Jesus away, but attracts him to us. God calls each of us to use our gifts and talents and qualities to go and preach the good news of Jesus Christ. And we do that humbly aware of our own weaknesses. It has been said that the church is not a museum of saints, but a hospital for sinners. Pope Francis says, the thing the church needs most today is the ability to heal wounds and to warm the hearts of the faithful. It needs nearness and proximity. He said, I see the church as a field hospital after human, after battle, caring for the wounded in life. So all of us stand in need of God's forgiveness, and Matthew experienced both God's forgiveness and God's call to a new way of life. The call of Matthew reminds us that the Lord is always seeking to break into our world whatever state our personal world is in. The Lord is seeking to call us in our sinfulness as he called Matthew and Peter and Paul and the rest of them. The Lord wants to communicate his boundless mercy towards us so that we can share more fully into the Lord's work, in the Lord's work in our world. Our prayers of intercession today for our Holy Father, Pope Francis, and our Bishop Peter, and all those who need to guide our church, we pray to the Lord. We pray for a renewal in our archdiocese as we journey through the process of restructuring that the Spirit of God may enable us all to live our lives trusting in Christ who will be with us and will help us in the challenges we face. We pray to the Lord. Lord hear our prayer. For a spirit of healing and reconciliation and truth for our indigenous sisters and brothers as they bear the hurt from residential schools throughout Canada, we pray to the Lord. For the sick that we are recommended to our prayers, that the healing power of the Holy Spirit may be upon them, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. I pray especially today for Lydia Alexander, who is one of our, watches our masses out in Stephenville Crossing, and she turns 90 this week. And of course, her daughter is the principal of St. Bonds, Annette Malay. So our prayers today for Lydia Alexander on our 90th birthday. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. We pray for all those who have died, and we pray especially today for Fintan Aylward. We also pray today for Pascal Alexander, Lydia's husband. We pray for all those who have died, especially those in our prayers today. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. And for your own intentions in the quiet of our hearts today, We pray to the Lord. God, our Heavenly Father, we thank you for all the grace and blessings you bring us every day. And we make our prayer in the name of Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God, forever and ever. We have received the bread we offer you, fruit of the earth, and work of human hands. It will become for us the bread of life. By the mystery of this water and wine, we become to share in the divinity of Christ, to humble himself, to share in our humanity. And blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the wine we offer you, fruit of the vine, and work of human hands. It will become our spiritual drink. Wash away our iniquity, O Lord, cleanse us of our sin. Yes. 
I'm praying, my sisters and brothers, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at your hands for the praise and glory of his name, for our good and for the good of all his holy church. Let us pray. Receive, O Lord, the sacrifice of conciliation and praise and grant that cleansed by its action we may make offering of a heart pleasing to you through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere, to give you thanks, Father most holy, through your beloved Son, Jesus Christ, your word through whom you made all things, whom you sent as our Savior and Redeemer, incarnate by the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary, fulfilling your will and gaining for you a holy people, he stretched out his hands as he endured his passion, so as to break the bonds of death and manifest a resurrection. And so with all the angels and saints, we declare your glory as with one voice we acclaim. Holy, 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 You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and, giving thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. We proclaim your death, O Lord, and, and profess, profess your resurrection until you come again. And therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity together with Francis, our Pope, and Peter, our Bishop, the clergy, and all your people. Remember all of our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection. And all who have died in your mercy, welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Blessed Joseph, our spouse, with the Blessed Apostles, St. John the Baptist, St. Matthew, and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen, amen, amen. 
We pray with confidence to our Heavenly Father in the words that Jesus taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, has said to your apostles, peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. And we share the peace of Christ now with one another. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away sins of the world have mercy on us have mercy on us Lamb of God you take away the sins Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed. An act of spiritual communion, a prayer for those who are unable to receive Holy Communion at this time. My Jesus, I believe you are present in the most blessed sacrament. I love you above all things, and I desire to receive you into my soul. Since I cannot now receive you sacramentally, come at least spiritually into my heart. I embrace you, for you are already there, and I unite myself wholly to you. Never permit me to be separated from you. Amen. To ensure that the reception of Holy Communion takes place in a safe and respectful manner, we ask that you please follow these instructions. Instead of individually replying Amen upon receiving the host, there will be one general attestation of Amen before distribution begins. Please remain standing in your pew until invited forward by an usher. Ensure your face mask is correctly worn before coming forward and maintain a two meter social distance in the communion line. As you approach the front of the line, sanitize your hands before receiving communion, bow towards the host, in silence, receive the host in your hands, step aside to consume the host, and return to your pew as directed by the ushers. If those unable to receive Holy Communion in the hand may come forward to receive a blessing. The body of Christ. Our communion hymn is Let Us Be Bread 6.4 in Celebrate and Song. Amen. 
Let us be bread, blessed by the Lord, broken and shared, life for the world. Let us be wine, love freely poured. Let us be one in the of life broken for all each now and hunger no more let us be bread blessed by the lord broken and shared life for the world let us be one Let us be one in the Lord. You are my friends if you keep my commands. No longer servants but friends. Let us be bread blessed by the Broken and shared life for the world. Let us be wine, love freely poured. Let us be one in the Lord. See how my people have nothing to Let us pray. Renewed and nourished by the sacred body and blood, precious blood of your Son, we ask of your mercy, O Lord, that what we celebrate with constant devotion may be our sure pledge of redemption through Christ our Lord. Amen. Just a reminder that tomorrow night being the first Saturday of the month, we have our annual, our monthly adoration and uh, benediction tomorrow night from 7 to 9 with beautiful music and reflect music confessions between 7 and 9 tomorrow night here at the church. And that happens every month, the first Saturday. So everyone is welcome to that. Uh, I'd like to also express our congratulations and our prayers today to Donna Marie. Today 
celebrates her 44th wedding anniversary. She was married in this church here 44 years ago. So we congratulate you. Thank you, sir. Thank you. And there's another person involved. He's out there, Nick Kelly. So that's her husband. <laughs> he drives her or she drives herself sometimes. So congratulations to you on this day. And we pray for you. And thank you for your music as well. Our prayer to Mary for help and protection during the pandemic. O Mary, Mary, you always always shine shine in our path path as a sign sign of salvation and of hope. We entrust entrust ourselves to you, help of the sick, who at the cross took part in Jesus' pain, keeping our faith firm. You, salvation of your people, know what we need, and we are sure you will provide so that as in Cain of Galilee, we may return to joy and to feasting after this time of trial. Help us, Mother of Divine Love, to conform to the will of the Father and to do as we are told by Jesus, who has taken upon himself our sufferings and carried our sorrows to lead us through the cross to the joy of the resurrection. Under your protection, we seek refuge, Holy Mother of God. Do not disdain the entreaties of we who are in trial, but deliver us from every danger, O glorious and blessed Virgin. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. May Almighty God bless us all in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Our Mass is ended. Let us go now in peace, glorifying the Lord by our lives. Thanks be to God. Have a good day. Our missioning hymn is Lord Jesus, We Must Know You, 517 in the Catholic Book of Worship. Lord Jesus, we must know you if we would make you known. For how can we proclaim you but by your grace alone? We long to know your fullness, your life of risen power. For you alone can the challenge of this hour. Our broken world